All righty. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to episode 190 of the Bench Time podcast from Wiley Scale Modeling. Whoa, whoa. What? 80, 180. I said 190. Oh, I thought you said 180. Did I say 180? You might have. I think you did. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 190 of the Bench Time podcast from <laughs> Wiley Scale Modeling. <laughs> Sorry if I... I didn't realize I said that. I don't want to lose nine weeks of my life there, man. No. Well, no, one, 180 would have... Uh, 180 would have been... Uh, yeah, 10 weeks. No, that would have been... Wow, well, yeah. Yeah, if you take it like that, in that context, where you're going to take it back to when we had that long break. You can't do that. You can't do that to an old man. Oh, Kristen can hear me upstairs, and she said, I definitely said 180 the first time. We don't have any insulation between the basement and the first floor right now. Um, and apparently she can hear every word we say. Uh, that's funny. So my that's wife is also funny. listening in on the podcast. Uh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. it's hilarious. Gotcha. Well, the old house, at least for what it didn't have, it had uh, insulation in the basement between the floor and the ceiling. But I didn't have right. to do that because we insulated the walls of the basement when we built. But I didn't realize the sound would travel up. So... Uh, it's all good. Got it. Got it. Got Anyways, it. all right. So now that I've been corrected by you and my wife, I guess I was wrong and I said 180. So let's move on and let's, let's, not a big deal, man. <laughs> well, no, I feel like I'm being persecuted here. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You are persecuted. I'm kidding. Yes. So, so what's up in the week that we've been off? Let's uh, talk about that. Yeah. Well, I've been um, banging my fists on the workbench. Uh, working on this Jordan miniature, which I thought oh, would yeah. be a fun evening project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those parts are so tiny. Well, it's unreal. I, well, I, let me just say that it's not that I'm not having fun with it. It's just yeah. like I only I've been making it a point to come down here and work pretty much every night. I missed a couple nights last week, but even if it's for 30 minutes, I come down and I work for a little bit. Sure. But 30 minutes at a time is still not enough time to cut and paint five little Jordan miniature parts. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. And then wait for the glue to dry. And then uh, and then the wheel breaks off. And then you got to do it again. And then the steering wheel pops off when you're trying to fix the wheel. And <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a wonderful time. But I'm doing the Jordan Highway Miniatures um, 19... Tw- oh, no. I'm, I'm not doing that one. I'm doing the... REA Freight? The Railway Express truck. Yeah. Railway Express. REA Freight Express truck. It's a 1929 Model A Ford. Okay. So, but it's been fun. Well, I think we have a couple of those to build. Yeah, I also have a 1925. I think it's also a model. It's a Ford. Everything was a Ford back then. (laughs) Or a Packard. but so I, I got, got another, when, I got another one of those uh, railway express trucks. Well, we were gonna it, we were gonna put them with the one. REA freight building. Right. I have another one sitting right here in the drawer. So when you're done, you can do this one too. Since you're so good at them. Yeah, but, I'm uh, so great at them. Well, I mean, you'll by the second by the first one you'll have it down. So the second one should go like a breeze. I'm gonna look at it right now. This, you should look at it. Are you looking at it? What? I I'm, I want to see what the parts and stuff are like. Oh my god! It sounds yeah, like you're not. unwrapping a candy from 1926 as well. Oh yeah. Well, these are these are interesting models because they stopped making them. Well, that's you the know? other reason I didn't want to take. I didn't want to rush through it because like they're not cheap to get now. No. No, definitely not. You're looking at 15, 20 bucks a piece now. Yeah, and what's even more depressing and, uh, is when you look at the sticker of the one that I got here, it was like four dollars probably back in nineteen eighty. Well the box it it says. Yeah, I'm it's like to get it's, it back in the box freaking anything. Holy shit. There you go. But um yeah, I, the my box here says 
it doesn't say anything. It just doesn't have a price on it. I also it. have that fire but, truck you gave me. Yeah, I got some buses, fire trucks. I got a, I got some, a bunch of REA freight stuff to make here. Uh, not REA freight, uh, highway mansions. Yeah. Got a bunch of Sylvan vehicles that had to be built as well. I wonder if but, someone um, owns the Jordan miniature line and they didn't, haven't done anything with it. I, I don't know if somebody owns it or not. And, 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 and the shame of it is they, they were awesome, cool vehicles that fit that timeline. They were. You know, the, that, that the 1920s through the, you know, the 50s. And uh, they, they, were, they were cool. And they're hard to come by now. It's it, it, good luck trying to find a whole lot of vehicles. Sylvan makes a bunch, okay? They do. They're not the but same. Make, right, right. And they're not making the ones like the REA freight truck, and they're not making some of those old-timer things. With every kit that you do that is like a fine scale miniatures or a Jordan product or a builders in scale or any of those, it's cool to put them together. But it's also when you do it, I don't know if you ever feel this way when you do an old kit like that, like this old Campbell one I have here, everyone that completes the next kit. Now they were built to be built. They were made to be built, but everyone that completes the next one there, there's less available. And you gotta like you kind of I don't know if you ever think that way when you're building it, but you're like, how many of this model of that kit are even left? Well, that's what other people were counting on the ones that hold on to them. They are, but but at the same time, it's kind of cool because you're like, you're building something that very few people are gonna build again because there might only be a hundred or so left that are unbuilt. And, and, you know, it takes you, you can take it two ways that way. You can take it and like you just said. But then you can take it as, well, you know, I, I held on to this and now everybody else has been building theirs. Yeah, but we don't think and that so, way. Yeah, I don't think that way, but there are a lot of people that aren't even model railroaders. They're hot. They're like, okay? or they're, model, like it's matter. they're like, they're like toy collectors. Right. Or, or they just collect it uh, because they know that there's a possibility of, of the value of it. They may not. It may just be antiques. Or yeah, they know they there's do. a market. So then they they hoard it and they wait and they know it's already high, and it's only going to get higher as they hold on to it. So that's and, and yeah. you know those people are out there, but there's well, also many modelers that you know have models and models and models and they'll never build them. Yeah, and you're like, what? I, I see that on. Now I got some. I got a bunch here. I'm stopping until I get them, until I get to them. But, um, I, and I'm not gonna lie and say sit here and tell you I, I don't have, you know, I, that I don't have a collection of models that are unbuilt. I do. Okay, but you didn't but, buy them with the intention of running, no, waiting. Right. You there? Oh boy. Oh no! You're here. You're here. There? Yeah. I don't know what that was, but whatever. Well, there are many models out there that have the intent to build the things, okay? But they keep buying them and buying them. And I saw one guy on Facebook or one of those groups that I was in in Facebook showing a photo of their shelf where they have all the models. Or I saw a YouTube video of a guy too that was showing his shop and his workshop and everything and then he showed behind him in a closet it was just jam packed full of kits mm -hmm. okay and it, there was a, a shelf a, a bookcase shelf that was also in that same room just full of model kits now I'm talking you know all kinds of military modeling kits Gundam he had a selection of everything he had the sci-fi models all kinds of stuff and it was stacked up literally hundreds of them and you're like first of all i want your job yeah you're getting that kind of you know getting that kind of cash but uh, but then the other side of me is going well why i know you i know he builds okay but why do you need well why do you need that many models right you know did you get to the part of my paints and, you know, people could say you know, okay todd 
Todd's got a lot of paints. Okay, he'll probably never use all that many paints. Mm-hmm. But you know, my paints I bought, I bought for the intention. It my intents are to you know, certain there's their paint sets that do different things. Okay, so some are acrylics and some are, you know, enamels and some are chalk or some are uh, for, um, you know, whatever, dry brushing and, and uh, you know, d- just different mediums. Okay, so that's kind of why I have them. I, I'm going to do some um, gaming gaming and sci-fi modeling. So I, I went out and I bought, you know... So, yeah, so anyways, these guys in line they have the tons and tons of models. You know, they're never in their life going to be able to finish those hundreds and hundreds of boxes of models. Yeah, you know? no, I know. But they have them. And they, they model, but they're never going to finish those. Right. So why, are you, why do you have them? You know, just, you know, let them go. Or, you know, sell them off. But, like I said, you and I think differently. We don't. We we believe that if you have a model, it's made to be built, right? Yeah. So and Doug talked about that build. before. They're, we've had we talked about this many times. Yeah, they're built. They're they're made by the manufacturers to be built. Right. Exactly. So, so there are some that you build, and you had some of the same brand, and you build one of the one brand. And it turns out to be a guy shit show, right? Mm-hmm. So that. that deter them from building another of that brand and then in that case they're holding on to it right right so there's that there's that as well but yeah so the the absolute fear of trying to open another one up i mean we've all hit a model that's that was a nightmare Mm -hmm. you're going well i don't know if i'm going to do one you know anyways what are you working on i am working uh i'm still working on my building okay my french cafe thing um, but it's now starting to take life. Uh, I put um, the we talked about it last week the U rust, but now I'm beyond that. Now I'm working on this the uh, actual front, like it's like a storefront of the cafe, um, and that's turned out real nice. I went back to blue, by the way. Oh, good. On the actual roof, I uh, on the on the tiles the uh, the. Uh, slate tiles yeah is that is slate tiles and the tiles i am putting um moss on them in spotted areas uh patches of moss and things and i'm having fun with it, it i'm using the you know the uh, fine turf from woodland scenics uh i'm using the burnt grass and the, uh, my puppy's barking down the hall i can hear that and um he's playing some with your mom uh anyhow um, or, or the medium green in the turf, and the fine, but it's the fine turf. And I just I put some a, a dilated, um, dilated, <laughs> diluted, <laughs> dilated water. That's a new model term. Dilated blue. Yeah, dilated, dilated, <laughs> diluted, uh, diluted uh, glue. Uh, all I can think of when you said dilated is when you go to the eye doctor and they touch your eye with that <laughs> damn. My glasses. I mean, they, yeah, they. I, last time. Well, we'll get to that. So uh, we'll get to that. Thing. That'll be kind of a, a funny treat. So, but um, yeah. So, anyways, I do diluted white glue, eighty uh, percent glue and twenty percent water on this mix. Okay, so that way it sticks on the slanted roof and it doesn't roll. And I just kind of painted on it where I needed the, the turf and then I sprinkled the turf on real heavy and then turn it up the whole thing upside down, shake it off. Right. Yeah. And it's stuck in sp- spots where I put the glue. Okay. And then I, I gently splattered some of the glue with a toothpick on the spot. So you get these little itty bitty tiny dots and then I put some more on and did that. So, uh, yeah, it, it it uh, it's working out real nice, but I'm not doing. I'm not stopping there. I saw uh, I saw a video from Night Shift. Uh, that guy does a military modeling. Yeah, and um, what do they call him? Um, anyhow, he's super great. I love his I love his YouTube channel, 
and uh, he does a great job. I, I don't know where he's from, somewhere in um, Eastern Europe. And uh, anyhow, he uh, he's funny, but um, he is taking the vegetation to a different level by using different colored washes on the vegetation once it's dry. So um, I made this uh, kind of a khaki gray from uh, Vallejo. Yeah. And I thinned it down to a, 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 a wash. It's not overly strong. And then I dabbed it on to where the moss was in the center of the clumps. Okay. And then it soaks in, you know, cause it kind of goes in with the, you know, the, the, the fine turf soaks it in and you can see it spread in and then you let that dry and you do all the spots the best you can with it and it gives it like a yellowish greenish tone okay um it, it makes it a little brighter but then you then i'm uh i'm not on the next step yet but the next step for me is going to be is um it's more of a vivid green i make a vivid green wash and i put that in the center of it okay and then they it kind of blend it all starts to kind of blend and then you get different shades uh, of these greens in the moss just like you naturally would it makes the moss look more like a natural moss okay and then one of the last things you'll i'll do is i'm going to take some um dark it's also by vallejo it's a uh dark uh where to have it right here had the bottle there it is. Um, it's black that down a little bit, not quite as much, but I'm going to gently, with a very fine tip brush, touch some of the outer edges of the moss so to give it that brownish dead look that you get around the edges, you know? Yeah. So, um, and, and uh, just, uh, yeah. Um, and, and you don't do that quite as much, but yeah. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm working with the vegetation i'm finding through these modelers that you can change the vegetation both with a brush and paints and acrylics mainly but you can also use uh you can also use the um ak or mig ammo uh, ammo by mig i mean um you can use their slimy uh grime light and slimy grime uh, dark, remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, in the enamels, and you can put them in there, and uh, you know, give it give it that extra life. But you can bring more color to your vegetation, and more natural colors, um, and they don't have to look just like the standard, you know, woodland scenic or whoever makes right. stuff. Right, you're you're standard. getting more oh. variety of color than what you can even get in this in the scenery detail th stuff. And so, uh, you know, and it's neat to watch because it's not just like these, it's not just like turf. I mean, they're doing it with, with plants and trees and everything else. And then they're also doing it with an airbrush, which I haven't really attempted to do on it yet. But I think we're going to try some of that on our layout um, with the airbrush. We're going to bring the airbrush down. We're going to work on... Um, well, I'll probably, I might even try to stuff. get one by then. Yeah. I know you were talking about that. Yeah. So I even was looking at a portable airbrush. It's a small airbrush without a, um, and I've seen them advertise, uh, well, not advertise, I've seen them demonstrated on some of these guys' um, YouTube channels. Uh, uh, Barbados Rex. He's, uh, you check out his YouTube channel. Just as it just as it sounds, is how it's spelled. He is a uh, very uh, interesting uh guy he does a lot of youtube videos on paints and you know, uh different products and things like that but um he's a great he's all about airbrush stuff and um he's also a modeler but he's his, his show's outstanding and um he was um he was demonstrating one of those airbrush you can get an airbrush it has like a little tech on batteries you know and uh, for what we do, it, it's just fine. They're yeah. Like, they're, they run anywhere from fifty nine dollars to hundred bucks. You know. Yeah. Well, I've seen them as low as thirty nine dollars. Um, but and he was showing how those work, and they work just like the regular airbrushes. 
and they had their own air tank on the bottom. It's just a little tiny thing. It looks like a like smaller than a Coke can, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I was those. I I might even look into getting one of those at some point. Um, but that would be neat to take to your layout, and that way you're not lugging around the big old tank and all, all the hoses and shit like that. And you're just you know doing your you you know especially like like color uh, you know painting your track and and your ties and things like that on the on your on your trains um or the you know the paint the gravel and stuff uh, the, for your for your um ballast and things like that um give it different shades mm-hmm. uh, roads same deal with dirt roads and such so i mean there's a lot that can you can do with it um so that might be an interesting way to do it as well since we're not but you know, like I said, it'd be just as easy for us to take our tank down there with a ten foot hose and just go to town on it. Mm-hmm. You know? Provided I still have a hose, I have my air my my um, workbench in the, behind me uh, has uh, it's turned into my airbrushing station, right? Yeah, and my booth, my and uh, I put a giant hook like you would hang hose like garden hose on. It's not quite that big, okay. But it's um you can it's it's just a bracket basically it's a bracket it's a bracket to hang bicycles of all things <laughs> but I took just one of them and uh, hung it on there uh, and screwed it into the side of the workbench leg and it's on the leg of the workbench and then I can coil my airbrush hose and drape it over that right huh. so it's not a helter skelter all place. Well, now it's at puppy level. Mm-hmm. Okay, because all he has to do is reach. I don't want him gnawing on the. He you know, puts one little puncture into one of those little into into that thing, into one of the, into the hose with his sharp puppy teeth, and your hose is toast. Right. You know? So, um, so now it just sits on top of my bench. The hose does. So I can't even use that right now until I convince that he doesn't chew things anymore. And that's another thing. I bought something brand new for my my workshop this week um i had to buy a new waste basket one of those ones with a pedal that has a damn lid <laughs> because the dog's getting into it and he's he dar- tearing stuff out there and he comes you know, the bear and jump out he's got a paper towel with all kinds of paint hanging off you know stained on it it's old you know but it's like paint stained paper towel he's got it in his mouth and he's running down the hall with it and i'm like ah kidding me you know He's not eating it. He's just shredding it. Right, but right? you got but, chemicals and stuff in there. Right. Exactly. Now I've been I I've been using mostly an I mean uh, um um but, um vinyl um gosh uh, acrylics. Yeah. Okay. So it's all water based. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be okay if you you know that's not fatal or swallowed, but. Yeah, I wouldn't go drinking lots of it, right? Right, it's like we yeah, were talking I about. I don't want to give it to my dog. But I'm looking on here for any warnings on these on these uh, acrylic models. I don't see any, no. So, but still, it's not something you would just consume. Right. And I don't want my dog consuming it. No. You know, and then what's to say next? I'm not I'm not working with enamels or something like that, and he sticks his face in there, you know, and he's got something horrible in his mouth now. Yeah. So I put a I got a trash can with a, a pedal lid, and it, not only a pedal lid, because sometimes they can learn they learn dogs learn to lift the lid. Right. And then he's getting in there and uh, snooting around and everything because he can lift the lid up. Gosh. Man, this internet connection tonight is doing us dirty. Am I back on? Yeah, you're here. I was saying now your dog not only learns how to get into it, but he can snoot around because he knows how to lift the lid up. Right. Got a little latch on the front. It could push in on it as well. That's why when I bought it, there were like 100 to choose from. And I got one you can push a latch on the very top of it, and it locks it too. Mm-hmm. So it won't even open with a pet pedal, and they won't be able to push it up with their nose until they figure out how to unlock it. But um, he won't do that. I don't. Th- I don't see that happening. No. Um, but yeah, it's uh, no, safe, safer. Yeah. So, well, but. just uh, the Wi-Fi interruptions today. Just what, we'll just talk through them, and then I'll. End. Okay. So. so Anyhow. It's just, uh, 
you know, that's what I did. I did the, uh, I'm working with the vegetation on, on the roof. And, and then next will be, um, next will be more of the storefront, uh, that I'm working with. Yeah. Is the storefront still, uh, that weird blue color? It's a blue color. It's very, very, very cool. Uh, do you want, do you want me to shoot you a picture of it real quick? Yeah. Send it on messenger. Do that. Hold on. Let me uh, get a picture. Yeah, and, and you'll see. I'm light down on it and get a good shot. But um, and, and I'm painting it and then trying to trying to put some um, gray. It looks almost white on there, but it's a uh, it's a it's like a, a gray color um, uh, of line, very 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 thin lines to show where like wood grain and things would be. So let me uh, let me take a picture here while we're talking, and I'll shoot that to you while we're talking. So um, there we go. That's, uh, that's really nice. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll show you the roof. I'll give you a picture of this roof too, with the uh, the grass on the front, and then the grass on the back too, on the back roof. Although I don't know how much of the back anybody's gonna be able to see. Anyhow. Um. So yeah. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I'm loving the fact that you can, you know, I never thought to paint the vegetation, you know, but let me see, Messenger. Hey, Brad. while you're sending that, did you see Matt Hankins post on the the Pat Apsco Falls Division Baltimore Street Corner? That thing is insane. It's crazy looking. Good. What's that? Well, uh, right now... Probably one of my favorite modelers. Did you see the pictures um, he put up of that street corner? Yeah, I just said I did. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. I'm just in awe. I'm looking at it. I'm scrolling through it. I was waiting for you to send me the pictures, and I started looking at the the pictures of this. For some reason, um, my it was... There we go. Um, let me see. Holy cow. It's like through the window. I mean, he's going above and beyond on that model. That's that's amazing, absolutely amazing. The underside of the storefront has that rotted out storefront, and then you can see the bricks where it's like the woods rotted away. Yeah, man, Matt, hat, I tip my hat to you because that is insane. That is absolutely insane. And then at the and then at the very end of that row, did you see there's like a beautiful little row home? It's like well kept. Yeah. That's awesome. That is too cool. He got like this dilapidated old row, this dil- this dilapidated old street corner, and then in the back and then in the front, there's like a nice row home where they kept their they kept their property looking nice compared to the rest of it. I shot those photos to you. See, so see the new blue now. Oh yeah, that's definitely not porta potty anymore. It's a, it's a, it's like a, what the heck kind of blue? I mixed it. I mixed that color blue. Um, I used a, oddly enough, I used a, I mixed. Shoot, right here. A um, dark Prussian blue from Model Color. And what's the other one? Stone gray from uh, Model Color, and I mixed the two together, and uh, really, really turned out pretty good. So I was happy with that. Yeah, it turned out fantastic. It's it's a blue jean color, you know. Yeah. So out real, real nice, and uh, so I'm working on that. That's the next thing. I got to get a sign on that. Um, we gotta send me the dimensions. I thought I, I, I thought I did, but I didn't get any dimensions for it. So I, if you sent them, I didn't get them. Not a problem. But okay. I just don't know what what color to do it in. I guess white would look best on that in the background. I wouldn't want to go with any dark because it's inset. But anyhow, what if you uh, didn't yeah, do it's... that and we match the blue? And you did white lettering on the inside. That would be awesome. 
That would be absolutely awesome. I could probably manage that. What I'll do is I'll like open it up in Photoshop and do like the paint dropper tool or the eyedropper yeah. tool and pick yeah. like three or four different colors of blue and send you the same sign with four different blue backgrounds. Awesome. That way you can cut the one out that matches the best. And then we that'd can have be, that would be sweet. White serif lettering, like a like a Roman style lettering inside that inset for the sign. Yeah. I have a, a photo of a, an actual French cafe from back then. Um, it's still in operation today, and I'm going to shoot you that photo of that. That's where I got the, the idea for the design of this, um, uh, the color of this uh, scheming, the color scheme. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you the, one of the signs I saw kind of light. Okay. And then you can you can go from that. It's uh, yeah, yeah. That would be that would be. I think that would look really good, and it would look like we could do it in a way where it looked like it was the the letters were like painted on. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? So sweet. Yeah. Do love it. it. Yeah. I love that. All right. All right. We'll do it that way. Yep. yep. That sounds awesome. Sweet. But uh. Okay. Ah. Ah, funny, well, and, you know, and this is how we, we come up with some of the goofy stuff we do, with the two of us combined. Yeah, and because uh, he has that ability with, he can do that, make signs really nice with his computer. I I've done it in the past and I've done okay, but you're way better at that than I am. Well, it's kind of uh, what I do for but, a living. Exactly. But yeah, so it's coming along. Um, I'm enjoying that. Uh, the build. Did you see the grass on the roof? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's turned out nice too. But um, yeah, it's just yeah, a different uh, touch on it. Yeah, it's got like a different, got different light and dark shades. Now I'm gonna put another coating of that yellow, it, that yellowish uh, coating in there and draw it out just a little more because I think it, I think it was a little bit too light of a wash. Yeah. And I want to kind of brighten it out. But you know, still, either way, it's it's, it's going to look nice, and I'm having fun with that. That's good. Um, other than build, then yeah. what's that? I have to build when I'm done with this building. I have all kinds of little detail parts to do for the diorama that I'm going to start working on, like street lights and all that kind of crap. Yeah, it'll go with it. So yeah. All right, let's circle back to let's circle back to the the eye doctor. Uh, yeah, so I need to get new eye. I went to the eye. Yeah, get new eyes. Eye glasses, you know. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, they. So you have your choice. So last year, <laughs> last year they sent me out there to the. Uh, I went and got my eyeglasses, and and um, and I won't say the name of the. I like the place where I go, but it's a it's a chain, and it's you find it anywhere in the country. Uh, but it's um, I, they did, um, they had to put the drops in my eyes, okay, and I so they put the drops in your eyes. <laughs> And then they tell you, well, you can't see for four. You're not going to be able to see to. Uh, you're going to have blurry vision from for. You're not going to be able to see. You're going to have blurry vision for four to six hours, right? So we don't recommend you driving your car. And blah 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 blah. But you just drove the there. You're gonna get. How are you gonna leave, right? <laughs> well, I guess I'll just wait for the bus. I'll just wait for the bus to come. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. You can stand you don't out. Wait for the bus. Look, <laughs> You come pick me up, honey. Right? I'm not doing that. I'm driving home. I have three miles to get home, right? Or five miles, whatever it is. But it's, um, anyways. So what they do is they put these drops in there, and then you can't see anything. And you go out into their lobby, and then they get, this is what they say. You can go through and look at all the, all the <laughs> frames on the wall, pick out frames that you'd like this is you know so you know you say okay well you know what's what's my health care covering on my frames right so they they can of course tell you that but you have that mindset in your head what you now you got to look at the prices of these things well the prices of these things are written on or or printed on a little tiny tag inside the frame so you got to take the frame out of the rack and you can't read the damn thing because your eyes are all blurry right Mm mm-hmm 
So I don't know what it says. So I'm going back to the lady, and I got this thing in my hand, and she goes, oh, this frames does. I said, I really like these frames, right? I know what they, I couldn't read what it said. I thought it said $150. <laughs> it was $350. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm not paying three hundred. Uh, she, she goes, "Oh, these are nice." I said, "Yeah, can you tell me how much they are?" And she goes, "They're three hundred. <laughs> yeah, three hundred fifty dollars frames." And then, so I just went up the tray this time, and um, well, not this time. That was last time. Um, this time I went. I said, "They asked you, do you want to do you want to have eye drops put in, or do you want? Uh, we can also do uh, the retinal scan." Right, where well, you don't have to have the eye drops, and then we'll just do a retinal scan. And I was like, ah, uh-huh. I said, yeah, let's do that. She says thirty-five dollars more if you do the retinal scan, and but we'll have instant results and blah 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 blah, and then you won't have to worry about your eyes being blurry. And I was like, for thirty-five bucks, let's do it, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so this time I didn't have that worry, but last time I I ended up after she told me that one pair was thirty three hundred fifty dollars. I grabbed a tray that they have, and I went in there, and I started grabbing as many of the frames that I liked, put them on a tray, and took them back to her. I don't think she liked it, and I had her tell me all the prices. <laughs> I had to sit the ones that were in my price range over to one side, get rid of all the expensive ones. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I didn't go super cheap, you know, but, you know, I, I, I had my idea what I was looking for. It's just funny that they did. They can't put them on the rack where when you go down the rack, they have all the price levels of one level. And put them in well, big. In- the other thing is what they should do. This much. This much range. Well, the other thing they you should know? do is if your eyes are blurry and whatever, after you get that the drops and stuff, they should let you pick your frames out first because why do you want to try on eyeglasses to see how they look on your head? When your eyes are blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, these look the other thing. these look great. And then you get home and your eyes clutter up and you're like, Oh man, these look like crap on me. I, I couldn't even see when I was trying them on. Right, right, exactly. You know, so and and that's the thing. I mean, you know, you I remember when I went and it was during COVID, okay? <laughs> and then they didn't even want you to put the frames on your face. Right? So you're looking at them, and now you don't know what they look like on your face because you're not supposed to put them on your face because, you know, of the COVID, right? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So, because um, everybody thought that everything you touch, that other people touch, you're going to catch it. Remember that? Do you, do they so, still do the thing at the eye doctor where they have that light bulb that comes at your eyeball and it touches the, it touches your eye and they tell you not to flinch? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, no, it's the puff of. Oh yeah, it's a puff of air, but it's still it's that blinding light. The retinal scan, the yellow flash. I'm I'm excited. What's that? Retinal scan is a, a a yellow flash. You're looking at this thing. It looks like a house in the background, and then all of a sudden you see this giant yellow flash, like it's lightning storm. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they tell you not to jump. <laughs> They didn't. She didn't really tell us that. She oh. just to make sure you keep your eye open, right? So, uh, and it was pretty, pretty okay. The retinal scan was fine, you know. But, um, but you're right. They do the puff of air thing, and they tell you not to jump. Don't flinch. Don't flinch. Don't blink your eye. And then, <laughs> <laughs> poof, right in your eye. You know, ah! the mo- probably one of the most sensitive part. <laughs> Yeah, you know, nobody, everybody, everybody hates it. Nobody likes it. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It's easily one of the most sensitive parts of your body, and then they blast the air into it, and they go, "Don't jump when we do this." <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's of all the up, of all the technologies that we've had in the, in the, in advancements in medical care in the last f- forty to fifty years, they couldn't come up with a better way to test your eye or whatever they're testing when they do that puff of air than to blow a puff of air from an air compressor right in your eye. <laughs> yeah. And you know what else I like? When you go and get the eye test, they do the eye testing, right? So they get your eye. But they, they have you read the bottom line and they say, okay, take your glasses off and read that bottom line. I think they do it just so they can laugh. <laughs> they, they, they laugh. Look, look how blind this guy is. I have 
why I have goddamn glasses, right? So they read that bottom line, and, and the, the line might be T Z G L Q. That doesn't sound good, right? But T Z G L M W. Right? Yeah. And you're like, and, and you have your glasses on, you're reading it, it's like B O R Z S A. And it's, every letter is wrong. And they'll go, oh, okay. And you know, you know damn well that you mess up every letter. That's why you wear glasses. <laughs> you got to, but you got to go into that. You still got to go into it confident. Dork. Why? Don't make me do that. Huh? You, you still have to go into it confidently and be like, yeah, I know these letters. S R O A Y C. And they're like, no, that those were actually numbers. Why were you saying letters? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, don't make me, don't make a fool out of me by having me read that letter. Now, now my doctor, my doctor, she's really nice, and and she she did make me do that. But then I'm thinking to myself, they must be sitting over there inside going, hey, let's get these idiots in there. Oh, let's this get these idiots in there. And after it's over, I wonder if they're like, oh man, I had this guy earlier today. The third, he couldn't even read the third line. He was he was making up shapes too. <laughs> Him three lines and he couldn't even read the middle line. He <laughs> thought he was reading the bottom line. <laughs> well, ma'am, I can see the E at the top. <laughs> yeah, the one giant A at the very top of the middle. Line. I see that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not even that. I don't even have that. There's, you know, I mean, it's just astigmatism. Would you say and, the other uh, day you're like, you're like, you're like, I got 2020 vision with my glasses on. Yes. <laughs> No, she said you had twenty twenty. She said I had twenty twenty vision with a slight stigmatism. Gotcha. And you can't so do contacts. Just, I can't. I'll tell you why I can't do contacts. Uh, please enlighten me. I t- touching my eye freaks me out, man. Does mom do contacts? I can't touch, yeah, mom wears contacts, but I, your mom wears contacts, but I don't. I can't touch my eye, man. I get all freaked out. It's gross as hell. I don't want to touch my eye. I don't even like putting eye drops in, man. <laughs> I could never be a drunk. There's no way. I, I couldn't, you know, the people put the drugs in their eyelids and stuff. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This took a turn for the worst. <laughs> We're talking. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, 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 I can't touch my eye. I have a, you know, you know, and I think your mom gets a kick out of that because there's times where, like. I can only imagine the conversation that goes on when you have to go to the eye doctor with mom well i don't go to the eye doctor with mom no i mean the conversation you have with her when you're going to the eye doctor though uh why because it's about you're freaked out about eye stuff does she ever well, I, i'm not that it's that i don't like touching my eye oh. the, the eye doctor is not touching my eye when i go in for a for you know to get my thing they're just they're just you put your face in the thing and it does its thing, right? It's not me touching it. I can't touch my eyes with my fingers. It weirds me out. Okay, but I don't have the eye doctor touching my eye. So the glasses don't bother you enough to to get contacts. Yes, I like glasses. I, I'm used to wearing glasses. Okay. You know? All right. So, but uh, yeah, the bifocals are great. You know, once you get used to them, and and now if you get the right prescription, like I'm getting this time. Uh, I can't. I can't wait to get them. They're supposed to come in the next day or two. You know. What, and, uh, hang on. What would? And it'll be great. For, what would sixteen-year-old Todd or eighteen-year-old Todd think if he just heard you say, "I can't wait to get my bifocals in the mail"? <laughs> well, they're not coming in the mail. Oh, oh, oh! I thought they were shipping them to you. Oh. Nope pick them up better then that way they can adjust them to my face and all that shit right? i know but imagine so. what a younger a younger you would think if you if they were like man i just heard my older self say i can't wait to go pick up my bifocals <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know um yeah i don't know uh, i my, my self was said you wear glasses <laughs> <laughs> so, oh uh, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Yeah, that was the eye doctor thing, and so, but yeah, so we're just sitting here tonight. I'm just sitting here looking at what the next project is, and yeah, you know, we went uh, news. 
Uh, we got the lumber. I got the lumber through work. Yes. And uh, we have enough lumber to put our the layout together. We got to build our layout on the on the plywood side of things. Now we just got to get the. Let me ex- to get the, uh, explain the layout design we have set up. Okay. So we're gonna do a. Are we gonna start with an F or an E shape? Whatever we have it to do either. So, so I think we're gonna start to... with an E shape layout. Do the E shape and the, the yeah, from my way. The bottom and the top of the E are gonna be four by eight sticking out, and then the spine of the E, the you know the tall skinny part on the left of the E is gonna be um, two feet deep. So it's gonna run long like a long skinny, uh, basically an up and down track like a north south track foot right right yep six foot long on the on the along the one wall right so it's gonna be 16 feet long run along the back spine and then with two four by eights coming out the front which will be 10 feet out and then the middle e will come out how each end yeah on the on the top and bottom on the north and south side of the layout and in the middle how thick was the middle Six. Two by six. Two foot by six foot. Yeah, so that'll. Yeah, and now the the board on the on the on the top and bottom of the E will be will all will be four by six. Right. So that'll give it a four by eight length. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, it'll be four by eight in the top and bottom because of the two foot back, and then it'll be four by six in the middle, and then we're gonna turn that into our our yard. Two. Middle. What's that? Two by six. Two by six in the middle, and that'll become our yard. Two by eight, so it'll it'll be eight foot long. Yeah, right. In yeah, the middle. that'll be a yard though. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. It'll. So, the the I the idea is we'll have a long, narrow part for a long run, but it's not too deep where we can't reach over. And then the top and bottom will be big enough for us to put buildings and city and everything. And then the middle of the E, the middle part, will be where we can stage stuff and put some little bit, little industry buildings and then run a yard through it. And along the side, it's along the wall. We're actually going to have a side along the wall where we can put a backdrop on, on the 16-foot side. But on the jut outs that come out on the top and bottom in the middle will be Oh, accessible from three sides, like a like a peninsula. Yes. So we can you can walk way around those sections, and uh, which will be nice. It'll, it'll it'll still be almost like our three sixty, but with a sixteen foot section on the back uh, that we could put a backdrop. In, you know. So yeah. Now, um, so none of it will be super deep though. No. no. And no. and the nice thing is. I have plenty of space where once we run out of space, uh, we can always add on a little piece here and there. Sure. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we got a good plan. We're going to, we got all the plywood here for it. So now we just got to get some two by fours, do our bench work, and start laying some track down. And then after that, we can uh, start building our scenery up. But the other thing we're going to do different this time, which we didn't do last time, Dad, is we're not going to change the height of the track. Right? No. Right, exactly. So the track height will remain the same uh, the whole way through. We tried to bring the track up and down and have grade with the track, and I feel like you just run into too many problems when you're changing track height. So the track height's going to remain mostly the same. Yeah, not so much just running into problems. It ran. It, the The... For us, it's it's all about the urban scenery that we're going to make. We'll have more and, room if uh, we have less change in track height, though. Well, track is going to be on in is going to be behind the scenes, underneath the underneath the city. Right. Okay. Um, so because we're 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 not willing to give up a whole lot of real estate just for some track. Yeah. the The whole yeah. left hand side of the E, the whole spine of the E, will be underground. Yep. 
Yeah. So, but we also talked about the reason it's only two feet deep on the backside is because we don't want to have to be able to reach through and fix any cars that derail or anything. We want it to be a nice straight run. And if it derails, we don't have a far reach back in through there to fix it. We can go fix it. What's that? What'd you say? Go underneath um, to fix it. It's like talking to your grandma, man. I know it's my um, internet. Um, but we can go from underneath to fix it, and uh, if that's the case of anything derails, we can actually just reach underneath and fix it without having to, you know, go four feet back. Right. Do it. And yeah. F- and get, yeah. Fish your arm the whole way through this little tunnel to fix it. Yeah. So. That, right. So. Yeah. So we got a good plan. But, I think we made some mistakes that we learned from on the first one that we're gonna avoid on the second layout because um you know you just learn when you do it wrong not wrong when you when you do it the first time you have to do it again you learn what you don't want to do the second time right a little switch yard in there make all you uh train freaks happy and uh you know we'll switch yard in that center section right and for us it'll look good because it'll be like we're gonna thinking i want to model center section where the switch yard is and stuff with a uh, type train through the city and um i want to do a station with a platform and stuff like the harrisburg road station used to be in harrisburg okay. i don't even remember that. have you ever seen oh it's pretty cool how it was. so yeah um so that yeah i want to make the, the i i you know it's you know something you and i'll have to decide together but the center part um, that long section, which we, we can make into a switch yard. I'd like to do uh, a passenger station type thing. Yes, on the um, top. Be, be, right. You know, and, and then and then have a pass have some passengers cars in the yard in the rail yard. That looks great in any city. By mm-hmm. the way, having even if they're not moving, just lined up just passenger cars yeah. staged. But a station like the one in Harrisburg when I was growing up. It's a really cool station in downtown Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, near the, near the cap, a couple of blocks from the Capitol. It was kind of cool how it was set up, and you'd have to go down these stairs to get to it, and it, w- it was neat. So I, I'd like to be able to form something like that. And then also on the other section where just rail yard, we'll have rail yard in, I would like, in that area, I would like to – um, do it kind of like the Anoa Yards. Uh, Anoa Yard used to be one of the biggest, a long, long, long time ago, used to be one of the biggest rail, um, open rail yards there. It's a beautiful rail yard, by the way, right along the river. And it's mostly, it's, yeah. it's mostly Norfolk Southern now. But uh, now, Don't get me wrong, there's bigger now. But back in the day, it used to be the, the biggie. You know? It's still pretty there along the river. Yeah. Hurry up. It gets flooded out every so. five years. And we'll have to figure out an area where we're going to do the harbor. Yep. You know, and we'll have to figure out an area where we have a river run. We'll, we'll have a separate river from a separate harbor. This time we're not going to have the river dump into the harbor. You know, I don't think. No, no. that was I weird. I think we're going to have a river cut a small river from the waterfall cut diagonally through the layout, maybe right through the city with some, uh, like, um, what do they call it? Like canal way right through the city, you know, with bridges going over it and shit like that. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. So, um, and run off the corner or off the side somewhere, you know, uh, just, I don't want, I don't want the river or I don't want the river to take up too much real estate either, you know, but no, I want a river, but the river doesn't have to connect to the, the harbor either i don't want that i don't want the river dumping into the harbor that was dumb you know but it's what we had it's what we could work with yeah you know <laughs> it was like yeah it was it was partly what we had and partly what we had to work with but it was also ill-planned because we just kept adding stuff <laughs> Exactly. Like we, exactly. we were just adding things without – because we didn't set out with an initial plan. But now that we have most of our – like the one thing we don't have to worry about with a lot of people that are starting out new layouts have to worry about is what buildings you're going to put on, what you're going to build, what you're going to make, what you're going to do. Because most people start with the blank layout and then fill it in with buildings. Yeah. 
we have all the buildings that we need to make a sick layout. We just don't have, we just have to plan it so that way the buildings make sense on the layout. But we have like 80% of the buildings done. You know? Yeah, sure. I'm loving it. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Really yeah. excited about it. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right. So, what are you building next after you're done with your French diorama? After I'm done with this, this World War II diorama, I had the vehicle done. I'm working on the buildings now, and then I have the little details and stuff, and I'll have to make the diorama itself, uh, the base and all that. That's going to be cool. And, uh, you know, I'll be on that for a while. But while I'm doing it, I've already decided I'm going to start working on um, one of the uh, – those Merchant Row kits. I have a big Merchant Rose from Walther's in plastic, and I want to kind of work on that. And I want to I want to make it different than, than – it was supposed to be, yeah. you know, yeah. not that there's anything wrong, with that. It's a, but I want to, I want to try and build that. Or I have that Victoria's fall hotel, uh, from Magnuson models. And I've been holding off on bu- building it because I was thinking about making rubber molds. I still have that uh, stuff. To ask this. We need to do that. We need to, we need to make this that way. I can build them and we can make some we can make extra walls uh out of you know the plaster or whatever uh or even resin for that matter um into the molds yeah um so um you know that's something i would like to get on to at some point okay but and i gotta buy and I got a box full of other unbuilt kits uh in ho scale and i want to hit i want to get to them you know so that's that's the main thing, but more so than the kits and stuff is uh, I want to start building a layout, and uh, so that's that's a, that's the next thing, you know. Um, I have detailed parts that got to be painted. What about you? I am gonna finally finish my Campbell Scale Models Breckenridge Fire Station. Yeah, it's uh, we got the fire trucks from the Jordan Jordan Miniatures. Well, the Jordan right. Highway miniatures, uh, and we have. You've been looking for a fire station forever, and I know we bugged Doug about getting a fire station, uh, but I think I just need to build this fire station and get it over with. It's a wood fire station, but it'll be fine. Skirts of town, that's not a problem. What's that? Actually, I have an idea. We could outskirts of town. It doesn't have to fit downtown, right? And uh, and make it work. You know, that's that would be cool because we're going to do that too. We're going to have a section that'll be. Um, rural. you know, rural, and we have plenty of buildings that are good for a rural layout. Exactly, I had that whole waterfall section I built. That go, that needs to go into a rural area. Well, and the one nice thing is with the layout was we have we had some buildings that were very rural that um they like didn't back was the or. Right, but we were trying to cram them into the build into the layout that was cl- too close to the city. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was it was too much. So now we ha- we can have one side be more rural, and the other side be more condensed, or even that middle section, the spine of the E, could be much more condensed with because there's not going to be a bunch of track on it. We can condense those buildings and make a tight city on it. Right. And then have the top and bottom, like the north and south section of the layout, be more rural with the middle spine of the E be the dense city. I think that's the best way. Because we don't have to worry about track then on the top part. But then the rural part is cool because we have like Chuck's Meats and we have, uh, like I have that old church with the cemetery that I have to finish putting the cemetery part on. We have this old country looking fire station. We have some shacks and stuff like all those things can go on the rural part of the, of the city and then slowly blend them into the big city and actually have separate sections, almost kind of like, I mean, I'm in no way comparing what we're going to do to, uh, George Celios's layout, but almost like how a good layout has towns within the bigger city. Right. You know, 
even in our area, you have you have Shippensburg and Newville, and then there's Carlisle, which is bigger, and then it fades back into rural sections until you get to Mechanicsburg, and then it gets dense there, and until you get to Harrisburg, from Mechanicsburg, Camp Hill, Harrisburg, it's dense. So we can. That's how it is in in any any area you know you have it fades in and out between rural and and urban areas yeah so yeah we have the room to do that and i think when we lay out our layout out this time we'll have because we like i said we know the inventory of buildings that we have done so we can we can lay it out once the substructure is built in a more intelligent way where we can say, hey, okay, this section's for our country buildings and this section's for our downtown buildings. So, yeah, it'll be good. I'm excited for that. Me too. I really am. Uh, so, I've decided that I'm, I'm working in painting now. I'm going to be using two water jars. Oh, I also did a cool modeling project over the weekend. The cake. You did. You made a, a top hat for Willy Wonka I, for a birthday party. I did the Wonka purple top hat for my daughter's birthday. Yeah. And it, was, it was cool. Yeah. So I don't know if we've talked about that before, but oh, I bake. They're, they're, I'm, a no, of, I'm a bit of a no, baker. No, I make cakes, two cakes a year. Good. Listen, and I'm not I do, going uh, on any vacation for my daughter's birthdays. But, uh, that's pretty damn good. But, but I don't just, I don't, it's make, very I don't impressive. make them simple, right? For, uh, yeah, for, you got to put a picture of it. Put our, 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 uh, put up as the uh, art for this show. I will, I will. You know? so, but for, yeah. for an average dude that makes two a year, if I did them... If I did them professionally, I probably would get better. You know, if I decided to make them for other people, I would probably get better at it. But for doing two a year, I don't do too bad. And uh, and for a guy that doesn't like cake, I do. I think they turn out okay. So excellent. They're also, very impressive. Also, I don't like cake, by the way, which is kind of ironic that I make cakes. But uh, it's, it is really strange. I, it was very moist inside too. It was very. It was a tasty cake. It was a tasty cake. You know, <laughs> what? Some people in the country don't know what a tasty cake is. Are you and sure nowadays, our tasty cake's not a national brand? National or not? Now I know it was always a Philadelphia. I think tasty cake at this point has become national. I might be wrong. If there's anyone listening outside of Pennsylvania Eastern Seaboard that knows what a tasty cake is, I need to know if they're if they're national or not. But three times bigger when I was growing up. What's that? They were three times when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they. Um, so they were always they've size of their tasty cakes now. Oh my god. Yeah, you get a pack ridiculous. of you get a pack of butterscotch crimpets now, and it's like, it's like, it's like eating a, the size of the chewy bars that are also tiny now. But. Yeah, but, but anyways, yeah. So I made a cake. I made a Wonka cake. And made it look like the top hat. I've done a bunch of cakes. I did a, I did a, uh, a Lion King cake. I've done. Uh, uh, Me too. They were awesome. They've all turned out great. Yeah, I did a. I don't know. I've done them all. I've done. Oh, Audrey wants to do a Taylor Swift cake for her for November. Yep. So I got to figure out how to do a Taylor Swift cake for by fall. So. Just put a big old KC on it, and that's the end. Oh, make it look yeah. like make it look like a Kansas City Chiefs cake. Yeah, that's pretty there fun. You go. I'll do red. I'll do like red velvet on the inside, so it's red like the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Perfect. Put a big arrowhead on the top of it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, no, that's my like little side side thing I do for my daughters. I only make two a year and it's cool because they don't ever know what I'm making until the day of the party and they get to see they get to see the cake I made, which I kinda keep it a secret until I make the cake. So you do it. Everybody else is there loves it and appreciates it. So Yeah, you know, it's just something just fun I do. You know what the real story of it is though? Is because the first year we had a birthday party I found out how much it cost us to get the cake made. And yeah. I I said I'm never paying that much for a cake again. I'm just gonna make the girls a cake, and I and I refuse to pay that much to have someone else make a cake like that. So, nope. Anyways, all right. 
Uh, well, we talked about what we're working on next. We talked about the layout a little bit more. Uh, we have a plan for the layout. I'm gonna we're gonna start assembling the actual bench work for it soon. Um, anything else you wanted to throw in here before we wrap up? Well, I started using two water f- jars. To oh yeah, clean my brushes out. Um, and now I, I you know, I, I don't care what you use. You can use coffee mugs. You can use your coffee pot. I like to use this coffee mug with a spring in it. It's not a coffee mug. It's, I'm sorry, a, a jar with a plastic lid and a spring thing inside it, and you can run your brush over. Um, or Michael's, they have it as well. Um, and then uh, and then I have another one I just bought. Uh, it was like $4.97 or whatever, and it has. it's made by Speedball. It's the same exact size as the other one. And I wanted the same kind of, you know, same size jar, glass jar, because they're heavy enough, you know. Uh, so they're not going to tip on me. But and they're they're fat. These jars are fat. They're, they're called brush tanks, right? Uh, you hear me? Yeah, I'm. We're here. Okay. Um, and and then of course, the reason I have two is so that way I always I have one that I clean my brush in, and then the other one that I can dip into to get water out and put it on my uh, to mix it with my acrylics to thin them out or whatever or put them on my on my palette my wet palette um, and and thin my paints out with without having to re-dip in to get water and and make it you know to thin them out uh, um, or I can use it to rinse a brush out once I'm done cleaning it in the other. So that way I'm not carrying a whole lot of dirty water to my palette or to my paint or mixing uh, some kind of remnants bottles or water water things. Um, I keep my water in those plastic squeezable bottles that I told you about last week, mm-hmm. the tattoo artist bottles. Uh, I have not put any links up to. And I promised everybody I was going to put links up to some of my products and then start talking about them. I will this week. I'm sorry. This last weekend, we had a birthday party, a softball game, uh, championship. We had dance recital and uh, for the girls and a bunch of other stuff that kept grandma and grandpa on the move. And, uh, and, and it's a lame excuse. but um, That's not a lame excuse. Beat- we were in softball and birthdays. Well, Saying and then that watching girls softball championships on TV, but um, what I'm saying is I had time in between. Well, I could have done it. I just too. didn't. But girls, little girls wear grandpa out. So, um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, Audrey had her softball as well. So, anyhow, it's um, I am going to do that. There's some really cool products, and I want you guys all to see it. Um, but. Um, and I'm learning to work with them and I want you guys to be able to see if I screw it up or not. So, or if the product's any good, you'll hear about that as well. Um, if it's something new, I think it can help everybody. I'll, I'll do that too. Um, I just didn't do it this week and, and I apologize. Well, no, you don't need to apologize for that. I think that's a, a good excuse anyways. Two brush tanks. Uh, to for for my brush screen. The other nice thing is when I'm done at the end of the night now, I'm making it a habit because I have a bathroom with a sink and everything right behind my um, one workbench here is a doorway and it takes you into the uh, adjoining bathroom, which is the greatest thing to my new work. So that means I can just walk right over there, do what I have to do. I don't have to walk, walk through the entire house to go to the bathroom or get a sink. I have a sink I can clean in and things like that. And it's really, really nice. So uh, it only takes, I figure, it only takes me, you know, ten less than ten seconds to walk to the sink and turn it on, okay. Um, and so I dump the empty water out, put fresh clean water in, take it over to my workbench, screw the lid tight on it, and sit them on my bench, uh, both jars. And that way, I, when the next time I come in, I don't have to change that water. I sit down, it's nice and clean. I feel motivated. Believe it or not, having that clean water at my bench. When I first sit down and I'm trying to get into it and motivated, it makes me motivated seeing that there that I don't have to get up now again and <coughs> change that before I start working. It's ready to rock for me right now. You don't know how you know how anal retentive I can be. No. Um, 
No, never. We never realize how OCD you become about stuff. Yeah, and I have to. Um, I have to actually. Things have to be in their place, and they have to be ready for me. So, um, in reach, and uh, and I love it. So. That's that's a neat thing I do. It's a really simple habit that anybody should probably be able to get into is to prepare yourself when you're done so the next time you sit down, and that, whether it be the water or putting away your paints or whatever or just whatever's on your workbench, straighten it up a little bit. I know some of you people love your messy workbenches. Straighten it up just a little bit to where when you sit down, hey, rock and roll time, right? Right. Or, I feel good about what I'm going to do. When everything's in order for me, I feel good and 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 anxious to actually get on there and just get some work done, you know? So it's neat at the end to take extra, you know, four or five minutes tops and just the close of your session, four or five minutes to straighten it all out and then that's it. It's all ready for you to go it's like if you pack your lunch okay for work the next in the morning if you start packing your lunch while you're rushing around trying to get ready and you have to pack your lunch before you go to work it stinks because now you're pushing yourself and you're rushing it and you know and then then you make something that's like half-assed and not really thought through and you get to work and you look at it and you go i ain't eating this shit and uh, i'm going out i'm going (laughs) right (laughs) right it sits in the work we're Trader for you know three weeks and then it turns green you throw it away or you can think about the night before when you have like a couple extra minutes and pack that lunch the night before have it all ready for you put it in the refrigerator in a stack grab it put it in your lunch box the next day or wherever you put your lunch in and you take it to work with you you know all ready to go you know what you want and you've been thinking you thought about it the night before and you're actually going to be hungry for that when you're ready to eat your lunch it's a, i know it's a, a really strange analogy that i just gave there no it makes sense it yeah it, i love that idea of having it prepped and ready for me you know when you go to a doctor's office he doesn't have in the table when you sit down in the room <laughs> they don't have he doesn't have all this I know I'm ranting now, right? But you you go in there and he doesn't have all his tools and shit. You don't see bloody cotton balls and shit like that. <laughs> Old syringes his... laying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his work. And uh, well, it's not a workbench, it's a table that he works at. <laughs> that right? is his workbench. You know? <laughs> hey, you know, somebody's going in there and prepped it for him. Right. After every patient, they go through and they clean it up and they prep it for the next patient. Yeah. You know, in, for a dental company, right? So you know what they do. Yeah, it's right? prep time. They go in, they straighten it up. You you can't even tell the person was in there before you yeah. got in there. Right. You got it all cleaned up. It's all prepped to go. It's ready. It's ready for the doc when he comes back. You know, he doesn't have all his crap. Sit- no, hold on. Let me let me uh, clean this ear thing off. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. And he throws it away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before I stick this in your ear, watch me clean off the other guy's earwax off the off the thing. You know, they're they're not doing that, right? It's ready. Uh, that's how he does his job and does it efficiently. That's how we have to look at it for ourselves too. Sometimes, um, yeah. be efficient. Be efficient. Uh, I think you'll find enjoyment out of it if you. Uh, I mean, everybody finds enjoyment in it because that's what we do. But, but, uh, and like I guess I said there's nothing wrong. I'm not knocking the people that have messy workbenches and stuff. I'm just saying, for some for some people, it's it's really nice to have it the way you want. You know. Yeah, I will so. say mine is a hundred percent cleaner than it used to be. So. God, I went in there and dropped that lumber off, and I looked at your workbench over there, and I was like, wow, look at that. That is looking nice. I've never seen Brett's workbench look like that. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I actually enjoy my workbench now, so it's 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 a positive. The, I want to talk about one thing before we uh, wrap up. Come here. I want to talk about one thing before we wrap up. I enjoy my clean workbench, but I also I enjoy these big-ass fine-point tweezers you got me. Oh, which ones are you? They're like the long tweezers. They're like six inches long. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those I, are those are wild. I think they're hand-me-downs because they're dirty. But but the, I love <laughs> these tweezers. Yeah, yeah. They are my favorite thing, especially working on this Jordan miniature. They are awesome tweezers to work with. 
So I just wanted to give you, that's my tool tip for the week. Uh, big ass tweezers with a fine point are like my favorite thing to work with right now. Cool. cool. So, well, I think we covered some today and, and like I said, we'll, we'll get back into some more of it this, uh, this this week with uh, on the other stuff with the videos i, I plan on doing some video hey you need to start doing, doing maybe videos. a live and uh so do you and i did um, one. Oh, did you do one i did a recap of my my little shack that i built and i'm gonna do a recap soon of my jordan miniature i built i put some photos more photos up so yeah look for some more this week and i like i said i I uh, I apologize. This last week's been kind of crazy. So. No, it's all good. Um, all right. Well, you got- pardon my shitty internet this week. I don't know what's going on with my Wi-Fi, but we're going to wrap up for the week. Sounds good to me. I'm ready for bed anyways. Same. All right, dude. I'll talk to you later. See you guys. Have a good week. Later. <laughs>